In these problems, we've got some big messy looking things with radicals and exponents and we're being asked to simplify them. So let's see what we can do to make this as simple as possible. In the first one, we have the sixth root of x to the fifth all raised to the sixth power. Now you should know if you have, let's say, the third root of something and you raise it to the third power, those two things cancel out. So that's just going to be x. The same thing is going on here. We have x to the fifth that's being taken the sixth root of and raised to the sixth power. This part and this part cancel out and you just get x to the fifth. There is another way to look at this though. You could write this part inside the parentheses as a fractional exponent. So that would be x to the, whoops, x to the five sixth power. Remember the root is the denominator and the power is the numerator. That quantity raised to the sixth power. And then when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply the exponent. So this would equal x to the 5 sixths times 6 power. And in that case, the 6's would just cancel it. You'd come out with x to the 5th, which is the same thing we got the first time. Just two different ways to think about it. Now this next one's a little trickier. We're being asked to take the 5th root of x to the 18th and y to the 14th. Now, the one thing you can do is think about this. You know, when you have the square root of 4, it's really the, the root here is 2. Um, you can think of that as 2 times 2. And this little number here, 2, the root, is telling you groups of 2 you can take out together. So that 2 just comes onto the outside. There's nothing left inside here, so that just goes away. And the answer is 2. Well, we can kind of do the same thing here. You could rewrite this. This is going to take a little bit of room. The fifth root of x to the 18th would be 18x's all multiplied by each other. Now there's 5. I'm going to leave them in groups of 5. And let's see, there's 15, so there's 3 more. Now since this is a fifth root, uh, for now, I'm just leaving the y's out of this. I'm just going to deal with the x's. Since this is the fifth root, any groups of 5 that are multiplied together, we can take out. So there's 1x that comes out. There's 2x's that come out. There's 3x's that come out. So what we get on the outside is 3x's multiplied by each other. And what's left after all these are gone is just 3x's. So that's what happens when you take the fifth root of x to the 18th, although we still need to simplify this a little bit. Uh, but let's do the y's in the same way. I won't write it out, but how many groups of 5 do we have in 14? Well, I can take out two groups of 5. That's 10, and that leaves 4 inside. So I'd get a y and a y on the outside, and I'd get 4 y's on the inside. Well, 4 y's multiplied by each other is just y to the 4th. So I'm just going to write that as y to the 4th. Out here, similarly, 2 y's is y to the 2nd. And 3 x's is x cubed. And then we've got our fifth root. And this is x cubed y to the fourth. And that's as simple as we can make that one. All right, one last one. We've got the cube root of 32. Well, you can think of 32 as 2 times 2 times 2. Let's see, that's 8 times 2 is 16 times another 2 is 32. So there's 32. When we take the cube root, we pull out 3. That becomes a 2 out here. And it leaves two 2's inside. So we get 2 times the cube root of 2 times 2, well, that's 4. So 2 times the cube root of 4 is as simple as we can make that one. So that's a little bit of work with uh, these radicals and exponents.